Hey, what's up my math party people? In this question, we're trying to figure out which number is closest to the number three to the power of 20. The answer is B, and I'm gonna explain why. So first off, we need to understand that this problem is dealing with approximation. We're not trying to find an exact equivalence here. We're not doing that. We're just trying to see, hey, which of these listed answer choices is closest to three to the power of 20? The reason that that gives us a nice little advantage here is because I will then use the answer choices to my advantage in this case. Because again, your answer, the correct answer, relies on the answer choices. So we have to figure out which one of these is closest. So here's what uh, I wanna go ahead and express here. What I wanna express here is that, hey look, three to the power of 20, when compared to any one of these numbers, whichever one of those comparisons is closest to one. So I guess I would say three over 20 divided by 15 over six, three, over, three to the power of 20 divided by 15 to the power of eight and so forth. Whichever one is closest to one, well, that means that, well, three to the power of 20 and that specific term are closest to each other because any number divided by itself is one. And then the further away those numbers are apart from each other, the further away from one they will be, their quotient, that is. So just, you know, go ahead and watch here. Just watch along, and I'm going to just show you what I've come up with. So let's go ahead and compare 15 to the power of 6 and 3 to the power of 20. So first off, what I did notice is that I can definitely take the square root of both sides. I'm going to make this a little simpler for myself. You know, I don't, I don't want to look at these huge numbers because, again, on the GRE, you have a four-function calculator. There's no way you can compare these numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the square root of both sides. So remember, when we take the square root of a power, we essentially just cut the power in half. So we have 15 to the power of 3 now equals 3 to the power of 10. And again, just let me reiterate, these numbers are not equal. I am using an equal sign, just I'm assuming that they're equal. And I'm going to see how close they actually are. So next up, I want to show you that, hey, look, 15 is the same as 5 multiplied by 3, and that is still cubed. Why is that helpful? Well, I can now split this up into 5 cubed times 3 cubed equals 3 to the power of 10. Well, now that I have that, I can actually go ahead and cancel out 3 cubed on either side if I divide out 3 cubed. If I do that, well, now I'm left with 5 cubed equals 3 to the power of 7. So let's see how close these numbers are to each other. It's because with 5 to the power of 3 and 3 to the power of 7, that is actually a lot more doable. Very, you know, a lot more doable than previously uh, thought. So 5 cubed is 125. And 3 to the power of 7, which is the same thing as 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared times 3, that would end up being 9 times 9 times 9 times three, that is 2187. So we have a comparison of 125 equals 2187. I hope that you can clearly see <laughs> that that comparison is wow off. It is so off, it is not even close. I hope that you can see that, hey look, 15 to the power of six is nowhere near three to the power of 20 once we you know, simplify the common terms. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there for the time being, because I'm gonna show you how this comparison gets better and better and better. This method, I really like it. So he, here's answer choice A. I'm gonna grab that, I'm just gonna stick it right there. Let's try out answer choice B. So again, same deal, guys. You wanna work swiftly here, because again, you're just trying to see which one's closest. So just compare them. So we are gonna say, hey, we have 15 to the power of eight, and I'm going to keep the 3 to the power of 20 on the right side consistently. So here, same deal. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Again, you cut the exponent in half when we take square roots because you're taking it to the half power. A power to a power, you multiply. So 8 times half is 15 to the power of 4. And that on the right side is 3 to the power of 10. I have the liberty of doing this again, taking the square root again to get 15 to the power of 2 equals three to the power of five. From here, what I'll do is I'll 
similar method to before, I will show that five times three is the same as 15. And now I will show that five squared times three squared is congruent to three to the fifth. And then we will divide out the three squared, same as last time, except it's a different exponent. And now we have five squared equals three cubed. Remember, when we divide powers, we subtract the exponents. So five minus two is three. Now five squared and three cubed, let's compare those. Well, five squared will be 25. Three cubed is 27. Look at how close these two values are. Just take a moment, look at how close they are. That is as close as we're gonna get when comparing any of these answer choices. So I want you to, you know, I wanna just keep that there for right now. That's answer choice B. Look at that comparison that we get. Look, look how close we are. So let's go ahead and show C. And here's the thing. Because we've gotten so close with B, notice how we went from you know 125 to 2187, 25, 27. We got a lot closer. So if we just C, C is probably the last thing we'll need to really compare here. So let's go ahead and do that again. 15 to the power of 10, 3 to the power of 20. Let's try this thing out. So same deal as last time. I'll go ahead, square root both sides. Take the square root. So now we have 15 to the power of 5. And actually, you know what I can do? I can actually take, if I wanted to, the 10th root of both sides. Because if I take the 10th root of both sides, I'm now dividing the exponents by 10. And if you're thinking of, hey, I could have done something similar with the other ones, yeah, you could have. So if we take the 10th root, we're left with 15 equals and then that's three squared. So 15 compared to nine. So that's choice C. Again, these aren't, you know, this is not a true statement. 15 is not equal to nine, it never will be. I am just using this to compare how close these numbers are to each other. And when we actually do the math here, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and perform 2187 divided by 125. Let's see what number we get. Because again, the idea is the closer we are to one, the closer the numbers actually are to each other. So 2187 divided by 125, that gives me 17.496, just about. Now over here, uh, if I grab 27 and divide by 25, I can, you know, I think you can imagine that that's gonna be pretty close. And that's 1.08. So it's about 8% apart from each other. And then uh, 15 and nine, so I'm gonna do nine divided by 15, the right divided by the left, I get 0 0.6. So mm, that's a 40% drop, this is just an 8% rise. This is a crazy amount of rise, right? So I, I can see here, hey look, B, they're pretty close together after I simplified it, after I, after I took out a lot of the extra noise, if you will. If, if I go ahead and move further, because we're, we're pretty much done here. You don't have to do D and E, because you know the higher exponent you go with the 15 to the power of 12 and 15 to the power of 20, the higher you go, the further apart they're gonna get. I hope that's, that's uh, a straightforward, acceptable statement. But let's go ahead and do it anyway. 15 to the power of 12 equals 3 to the power of 20. Let's assume they're equal. And let's see how far off we are. So if we do this, we're going to see that we have, uh, we can take a uh, fourth root if I wanted to. Because both of those exponents are divisible by 4. So now we're going to have 15 cubed equals 3 to the power of 5. I also noticed that, again, same thing, 5 times 3 cubed. And that allows me to write 5 cubed times 3 cubed. Now I can eliminate the 3 cubed on both sides, allowing me to write 5 cubed equals 3 squared, which is 125 equals 9. No, that's, no, 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 that, that's, no, no, that's not even close, right? That's not even close. That, that is not a, no, right? So I'm hoping that 
we see a, a little more clearly how a problem like this might work. Notice how it says which number is closest to this number. So notice how you won't be able to give an exact answer, but you can use your answer choices to your greatest advantage. B is clearly the closest that we see here. We're all good. That's one solid way to do it. And there are others. So if you have a better way to do it, hey, let us know. We'd love to see it. We'd love to talk math. Math is our life. So with that said, hope this makes sense. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next problem.